The waters of Lake Champlain and Missisquoi Bay draw hundreds of thousands of visitors every year to the communities that line the lake, but they too are dealing with a long-time pollution problem. High levels of nutrients such as phosphorus and nitrogen in the lake can produce blue-green algae blooms that coat the bays and shorelines, and some of those blooms can be toxic. Public hearings were held this week on both sides of the border on a two-year study by the International Joint Commission that looks at the problem and recommends ways to address it. Resort communities like Venice, Quebec, where this week's hearing was held, depend on summer visitors who come to the village to enjoy Lake Champlain. The quality of water is important to many, many users of the lake, both near the shoreline, but also those that live farther away and come um, less frequently to the lake. But it's especially important to areas like this that are aware of it day in and day out. In Missisquoi Bay, um, they frequently uh, experience algae blooms um, from the middle of July right on through now, right on through uh, into September and even as late as October, um, which, is, which is, that's a new phenomenon actually. We didn't used to see these blooms that late into the season until the past couple of years. Um, and so that's, that's really impacted the communities along the bay, both in Quebec and in Vermont, uh, the folks who are trying to use and access that resource, uh, both for recreation, for fishing and swimming and general boating. The IJC and Lake Champlain Basin program have teamed up to try to find ways to reduce the amount of nutrients entering the lake. A large percent of, the, of that watershed is agriculture, both the Quebec and the um, U.S. side, the Vermont side. Um, and, and so that's um, from either from manure runoff or fertilizer that's being imported and then applied to the land, and also from erosion of stream banks, and, and there's a lot of phosphorus that's in the sediment of, that, of those stream banks that's eroding during large storm events like the one we just experienced on Halloween. That was a huge storm event. And um, all of that phosphorus then moves its way through the system and into the bay. The recommendations are looking at um, the land uses that are in the, in the basin now and the particularly agricultural land uses and the crops that are planted and trying to look at ways to rotate out crops that are phosphorus intensive. Corn requires a lot of phosphorus um, to grow. It's a very phosphorus intensive crop to, to produce, um, which is you know, one of the challenges that we face is a lot of the dairy, um, dairy farms use corn, grow corn to feed their cows. Two other recommendations are looking at protecting um, our, our, the lands that actually are good at, at trapping phosphorus, um, so wetlands, for example, um, looking at, at ways to protect and perhaps in, enhance or in expand wetlands, wetland areas that, that can collect phosphorus and serve as sinks, we call them, rather than sources of phosphorus to, to, the, to the bay. Um, and then also just pr protecting those riparian corridors that are eroding um, and can serve as, as buffers for um, phosphorus and other nutrients and pollutants that are coming off of the, off of the landscape. And while phosphorus and runoff is a huge problem in the northern end of the lake, researchers who studied the main lake have discovered an increasing amount of plastics getting into the water. Tiny fragments of microplastics that are showing up in the water and microorganisms that live in the lake. 